Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about single degree of freedom systems under free vibration. And we will go through the basics of calculation natural frequency. In the previous video, we went through the basic equations for calculation and also definition of free vibration and other relevant matters. Now let's have a basic mass with the S spring K without any damping system under no load or no external load. This is a free vibration system undamped. If you sketch the free body diagram of this mass, we have K U T and also we have the inertia force, which is M u double dot t no other forces are applied to the system if we write the force equation k or let's just start with m m u double dot t plus k u t equals to zero and this is the basic equation for the calculation there is another video in the differential equation you can find the second order equations ordinary equations uh, for the homogeneous solution. We can divide the, the equation by the mass of m, which is not zero, then u double dot t plus k over m times u t equals to zero. And I can assume that k over m, as far as k is positive and m is positive, uh, it's a positive value. So K over M, we assume that is omega S square. Recently, I noticed that there is also the negative value for K, but it's out of the scope of this video. I'm not expert in that. Then we have a second order equation. U double dot T plus omega S square U T equals to zero. The solution for this uh, Equation will be R square plus omega S square equals to zero. As a result, R will be plus minus I omega. And then the solution will be U T will be A times cosinus omega T plus B sinus omega T. So this is the basic equation for this free vibration system. And we should have two boundary conditions or two initial values for solving this equation in terms of a and b assume that at t equals zero u is u zero and the velocity at t equals zero is u dot zero for solving this uh, for a and b i need to take the first derivative by respect of t u dot t will be minus a omega sinus omega t plus b omega cosinus omega t and I substitute t equals to zero u at t equals zero will be a it should be u zero and u dot t at t equals zero will be b omega which should be u dot zero as a result we can find out a and b so a will be u zero and b will be u dot zero divided by omega. You can see that the solution is valid when we have u zero or u dot zero. Otherwise, there shouldn't be any solution. And it means that if you do not have any initial situation for deformation or the speed, then there is no movement. And the system is stable and it is under a static calculation. Let's substitute these two to the solution. U t will be u zero cosinus omega t plus u dot zero divided by omega sinus omega t. So this equation by the functions are very easy to sketch and understand and go forward. But traditionally, there is a way to change this equation sinus plus cosinus to only sinus or cosinus, and preferably it is always written as not always, but most of the time it is written in sinus format. So for that, perhaps we have to come back a little bit to the basic 
trigonometry if we have a function of let's say a cosinus alpha plus b sinus alpha i can take out b and then it will be a over b cosinus alpha plus sinus alpha and now a over b if it is a real number then it can be written as tangent of a of an angle like beta so if we assume a over b is tangent beta then y will be b times tangent beta cosinus alpha plus sinus alpha tangent is sinus over cosinus i can write it down b divided by cosinus beta times sinus beta cosinus alpha plus sinus alpha cosinus beta and from the compound equation of the sinus expansion this is sinus alpha plus beta so y can be written as b divided by cosinus beta times sinus alpha plus beta and so uh, beta is calculated according to a over b and b over cosinus beta now let's have a look on this if we have a triangle with the angle of beta and these two edges are a and b then hypotenuse of this triangle will be calculated according to a square root of a square plus b square now we can write cosinus beta very easily it is b divided by a square root of a square plus b square now instead of cosinus beta in our governing equation i can write down or substitute this equation and consequently the solution will be b is crossed with b then it will be a square plus b square times sinus alpha plus beta here you can see that we change the format of sinus plus cosinus to a very straightforward equation and the benefit of this is that you can easily see what's the maximum value of this equation which is called amplitude and typically it is written as a and beta is the phase coming back to our case this value is a and this is b as a result the phase beta is one minus one or reverse tangent of a over b will be u zero divided by u dot zero divided by omega or we can rewrite it down as u zero times omega divided by u dot zero and the amplitude let's go with a star for this case as far as i used a then this amplitude will be u zero square plus u dot zero divided by omega square it's good if we have a look at the final equation which will be ut will be a times sinus omega t plus beta a is the amplitude which is u0 square plus u dot zero divided by omega square and beta is tan minus one of a over b which was u0 times omega u dot zero if you look at the equation u0 dimension is length u dot zero the dimension is lt minus one omega is s square root of a over m which we call it natural frequency k is force divided by length so it is f l minus one and mass is mass we can rewrite f dimension as m l t minus s square and if i substitute this for the I, I forgot to put this s square root omega dimension will be s square root of m l t minus s square times l minus one divided by m simplifying this would result in t minus one we can see that it is one over second or 
radian per second. Radian doesn't have any unit for the calculation. As a result, omega is radian per second. Now, if we look at beta u zero times omega is l t minus one divided by u dot zero, which is l t minus one, which is unitless. We have a angular phase beta. Omega times t is radian per second times seconds, for example, it will be radian. Beta is radian. So this is sinus and a is u0 square, which is l square plus u dot zero divided by omega will be l square. Then a is with a dimension of length. A is called amplitude. Beta call is called uh, the phase. And also omega is the natural frequency. About this natural frequency, it is good to know that it means that if your system without any damping starts to vibrate, this is the frequency of that structure. It's easier to understand if we go with the period. So T is 2 pi divided by omega. And here we can see that 2 pi is radian divided by radian per second. So it will be with the dimension of T. And it shows what's the duration of one complete cycle of vibrating. And also it's, if you are interested in frequency uh, of the system in Hertz, you just need to find out one over t and typically software provides the frequency in hertz let's go through two examples and finish this video the first one assume that we have a crane on damped for now uh, and k is five kilonewton per meter and the mass of the main crab is let's say 50 kilogram and we assume that in the time of electricity connected to that, we have 25 kilogram scrap. What does that mean? It means that if the electricity is consistent, the deformation of the spring is constant. So let's just analyze it. So delta for m plus m is f divided by k. So f divided by k, the force is 75 kilogram times 9.81 meter per square second and then the k is 5 kilonewton per meter so this value will be 75 times 9.81 divided by 5000 times 1000 it will be 147 millimeter 0.15 millimeter so it means that if it is connected then the Scrap goes down for 147 millimeter. If there is no scrap connected to the system, delta because of m will be only 50 kilogram. So this value will be multiplied by two thirds, the ratio between 50 and 75. So it will be 98.1 millimeter. It means that if there is no scrap, the elongation of the spring will be about 100 millimeter. If we have 25 kilogram scrap, then it will be around 150 millimeter. So 50 millimeter is the difference between these two. It means that if we suddenly disconnect the electricity, then this 25 kilogram is gone, and the tolerance between the static or a stable situation of the spring will be around 50 millimeter. So it starts to vibrate if there is no damping system, which in this case we assume so. So let's assume electricity is disconnected suddenly. And we can find out what the maximum deformation and also the frequency of the motion with the given equations that we went through. So if it happens, then u0 will be the distance or the difference between these two values that we already calculated between these two. It will be 147.15 minus 98.1 millimeter. 
it will be around 49 millimeter and this is assumed to be the initial deformation as far as we assume it was in a, a stable situation u dot zero is taken to be zero coming back to our equation that we have we can calculate the amplitude value which is 49 millimeter as far as u dot is zero and beta is this beta is important when one of these values are zero we can assume that the downward is positive in this case if we look at the coordinate beta is reverse tangent of u zero times omega divided by u dot zero so it is sinus divided by cosinus it means that this is u zero and this is u dot zero divided by omega for finding the phase if u dot zero is zero then you need to check if this u zero is positive then beta will be pi divided by two if it's negative then it is three pi divided by two the same goes for the condition that u zero is zero if u dot zero divided by omega is zero then beta will be zero otherwise it will be pi the best is just to sketch the coordinate and find out where you are in our case if we assume downward is positive it means that from the static situation of m this side is positive so our crane was in this level as a result u0 is positive so u0 is positive and u dot 0 is 0 as a result beta is pi divided by 2 then you can write simply ut which is 49 millimeter times sinus we have to calculate omega which is s square root of k divided by m before than this k is 5 kilonewton per meter and that's important which m we need to use the resist uh, the the remaining mass is the mass which is in the vibration so it's only 50 kilogram so it will be 10 radian per second here you can calculate immediately p2 pi divided by 10 0 0.63 seconds and f reverse value of period which is 1.59 hertz and now we can write down u at time t will be a which is 49 millimeter times sinus omega is 10 t plus pi divided by 2 here for example we can see that sinus 10 t plus pi over 2 is always cosinus 10 t it might be more straightforward to write down 49 millimeter cosinus 10 t it doesn't really matter we can write down the equation for for the calculation by matcat let's continue with that let's start with u0 equals to u0 equals to here is 49 millimeter and u dot zero is zero meter per second k is five kilonewton per meter and the mass is 50 kilogram these are the information that we have and simply we can calculate omega s square root of k divided by m 10 t equals 2 times pi divided by omega 0 0.63 and also f equals to 1 over t 1.59 and u as a function of t you can write down uh, as a constant equation amplitude times sinus omega times t plus beta for example we need to calculate amplitude s square root of u0 here we didn't put 0 u0 power by 2 plus u dot 0 divided by omega power by 2 49 millimeter and 
what else beta that is the tricky one if you want to write if u dot zero is zero then for writing beta you might be in a trouble it's better if you write down a very simple if clause here so here we can write a simple code if one of these two values are zero so here we can use or if u zero equals to zero or if u dot zero equals to zero i can put one line here and here we can continue with those four conditions that are critical and otherwise if it's not it means that these two values both are not equal to zero then we can use the basic format so it will be ton minus one a ton and the equation was going back to equation u zero times omega divided by u dot zero and here we have two options u zero is zero we need to write another if if u zero is zero here we can use and u dot zero is not zero in that case so here we have two options u dot zero is positive we have to use if then it will be zero otherwise it will be pi and then we need to use another if this time u zero is not zero and u dot zero is zero in that case again we have these two options if u zero is zero is a uh, positive then this value will be pi over two otherwise it will be three pi divided by two so here for example we can see what beta is right now so it's uh, pi divided by two as we calculated and this is the function of u let me put this somewhere here we will use it in the other example and after that we can sketch simply the plot how it looks like u as a function of t and here we can have t we need to define t in advance t should be let's say 0 0 0.1 up to for example 5 seconds we need to use the units and if you want to see it in a more harmonic shape you can just adjust the value of t here is the system now let's a little bit play with the values here i put this here this one here and i will select these putting them in one area to have everything in one single page and we can check the values from here so let's uh, change the mass without changing the stiffness let's go with 100 and check how it would affect for sure we know that omega will be less and we can see that the period will be higher so it means that the structure period is greater as far as the system a stiffness remains constant let's come back to the original and this time change the value of k we can see that now the period is going to be very small so it means that if you have a very stiff structure then the period should be quite a small value this is applied to any structure the natural frequency is always with a a uh, direct portion of k and reverse portion of m both with the power of 1 over 2 as we can see here also let's play with a fair value instead of 50 let's go with 5 and let's change this u.0 to see how it affects here you can see that u.0 was 0 and a starting point was exactly from the 49 millimeter now if i change it to 10 you can see that the starting point even though u0 is still 49 millimeter 
now the amplitude is completely changed here let's find out amplitude you can see that it is not 49 millimeter anymore it means that the uh, the initial speed would affect the the amplitude as well because it's a function of u dot zero and u zero now let's keep this u dot zero as 10 meters per second and changing this value of k as far as we are increasing k we are increasing the natural frequency and as a result the amplitude is now changed to 149 millimeter now if i try to increase this value of k to 500 we can see that uh, the reason that you see it uh, happens that way if you want to see a better graph and better to see for example with just one second here you can see that how it looks like after you increase the uh, stiffness of the structure that's how it looks like uh, I want to solve one more example regarding this but I prefer to go with another uh, video perhaps it would be better if we keep them short that's the end of this video we went through the uh, solution of a single degree of freedom system with the mass of m and a stiffness of k without any damping we found the solution we went through one example and we tried to play with the values parameters to see how they would affect the results and also the initial conditions which are really important in the solution and response of the structure to the applied load in the free vibration that's free vibration example thank you for watching see you next time bye